As we all ascend in our student lives, every year, every subject grows bigger and bigger. The texts get complicated and overall the volume increases. Sometimes it's difficult to learn so many things all at once. So in this video, I'll share my approach of how I go about learning new content effectively and especially in the last four years of MBBS, I have had to learn so many new things which I can't even count. So hopefully this video will provide you with a lot of value and a lot of scientific tips to learn new content effectively. If you didn't know me, hi, my name is Anush Pachel. I'm a final year MBBS student at GMC. Nagpur and welcome back to my channel and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let us start off with the first point that is watching lectures. In the last two years we have mostly been focusing on watching lectures rather than attending them because everything has been online. So here are a few tips which will help you watch lectures much more effectively. First of all watch all the lectures in 2x that will save you a lot of time in the long run and if you can't adjust to 2x right away you can start off gradually at 1.25 then 1.5 1.8 and then go ahead with 2x. If you watch like 10 or 20 lectures at each of these different speeds your mind will gradually speed up automatically because it has this thing called as neural plasticity which will remodel your neurons to fit the current life that you're living. I'll give you an example when I was watching medicine lectures it was not very easy to directly go ahead and start with 2x speed and sometimes the accent got really funny but gradually and gradually as I went up the ladder of doing more and more lectures in 2x I got used to it. You should consider going down from 2x only and only with something very important they are telling or you are not able to comprehend even a single word. Second thing the most important thing is make a lot of notes while watching the lectures. I have seen a lot of videos which say that making notes does not make any sense, making notes is really not effective. But to be very honest, in the Indian scenario, if you're watching a lecture and if you're not taking the notes from that lecture, your lecture is essentially wasted because you won't remember it like after five or six months or even after five or six days. So what's the point of watching a lecture which you won't remember? The simple deal is that if you take notes, what will happen is that you can revise those notes and in a way you will be able to revise the entire lecture in just a few minutes. I'll just give you an example. The breast unit in surgery is around 5 videos, each video being more than 60 minutes. But if you read the notes, you can read the entire notes of breast in around 25 minutes. So that's the big deal about it and mostly all the questions that they're going to be asking you are going to be covered from the notes itself. Thirdly, do not break consistency in watching your videos. Set a daily goal that I need to complete set amount of videos every day and only and only then you will be able to do it for a long run. Otherwise, you will be doing it for 5 days and then just giving up and you will forget what you've studied in those 5 days and your subject will also remain incomplete. So no matter what is happening in your life, make this a constant that you have to watch these lectures because these are going to be defining how whether or not do you learn a subject, especially in the modern world where lectures have gained much more importance than the textbook itself. Like I was saying in the past couple of years, we have mostly shifted to the online mode of learning and everything now revolves around videos, which can be challenging at times. But there's a software which can really, really help you out a lot. Let me tell you about Wondershare Uniconverter. Let's say that you're a third year student, you have completed biochemistry by watching Dr. Rajesh sir's videos on YouTube and now you want to revise it. But you don't really have that amount of time to sit down in front of a computer and watch the lectures back to back. But lucky for you, these lectures can be converted into a podcast by simply downloading them and converting them into audio files. It might seem a little bit complicated, but it just really isn't. Step one, download Uniconverter and copy and paste that link into Uniconverter. The next thing you know, the lecture will be downloaded to your device and saved as a video file. And the best part is now you can use the same app Wondershare Uniconverter to convert this video file into an audio file, which you can then transfer into your phone and listen at two or three X while doing all the other things of your life. But but the most crazy part is that Wondershare Uniconverter works on 10,000 plus sites. So you can download videos from so many different websites and save them directly on your device. Another awesome feature of this app is that you can record your own classes if you are a teacher who wants to teach on YouTube and also do basic editing like cropping, trimming, merging and adding subtitles. Just select the export format as YouTube and there you go. There is so much more to Uniconverter like compressing, merging, playing and I think as a student this will be a very useful software for you. So use the first link in the description to download this amazing software. And thank you Wondershare for sponsoring this segment. Moving on to the next point. You have notes, now what do you want to do? Well, the most important thing is you have to revise, revise, revise. Otherwise, there is no point of your notes. I still regret not revising my pathology or pharmacology notes after I came into third year or now that I'm in final year. So read your notes after you've written them. That's the most important tip that I can give you over here. The schedule that I personally follow for revision of notes is when I'm done with the videos of one particular subject, let's say pediatrics, I will give myself around three or four days to revise the entire notes of pediatrics and gradually and gradually as I solve the question bank I will be adding the notes of those question banks into my own note. The next point is using pictures to learn new concepts which are difficult to learn by themselves. This applies especially to the image heavy subjects such as radiology or pathology where mostly you will be diagnosing the patient on seeing what the patient actually has. So if you're dealing with an image heavy subject consider making a notebook in your iPad 
with all the most common images that you see revise those images over and over again I actually made this book myself when i was in second year mbbs before my university practical exams so this is what it looked like it contained all the specimens and the identification points of that specimen the questions that the examiner is going to ask me and also the microscopic anatomy of each of these specimens so something like renal cell carcinoma or something has these features listed over here i don't really remember them right now but just making this one singular copy saved me hours and hours of work before my exam and that is one of the ways i was able to learn so many new things all at once another example is when i was again in second year i used sketchy medical a lot and their microbiology videos have these visual cues and they associate all the different things which you can forget about microbiology into their notes all through visual cues so something like the antibiotic metronidazole is useful in amoebic hepatitis can be represented by a metro passing in that scene so i really like that again when i was doing radiology i was really referring to this app called as mad radiology which helped me revise a lot of things quickly so yes image heavy subjects should be approached the way that they are actually existing image heavy way the next point is asking more questions and using this thing called as active recall so back in 2018 ali abdul popularized this concept of active recall and spaced repetition and all of that everybody was talking about it and it reached a peak and then gradually it faded away so active recall is just asking a lot of questions one of the ways that i practice this is when i'm preparing a subject for university examinations where everything has to be very very theory based i make a notebook and i call it the q and a notebook and in that notebook i write down the question and i write down the answer in a way that i will be writing down in a university exam and i do that two or three times so every time this question and i will be able to answer that that's active recall in a short form i also made this for my viva examinations for microbiology and as you can see this is the active recall sheet for different things for patho micro pharmac One of the simplest ways to practice active recall is when you're reading the book you just close the book and ask yourself what have you just read can you explain the same and recalling that will help you fix it in your mind right the next point is something which i did a lot back in first year and second year that is whenever i used to understand a new subject i used to explain it to someone usually a junior in fact when i was done with anatomy in first year i took classes for anatomy just for fun because i really liked explaining things to people and probably that's the reason that this youtube channel actually works so what this does is that it forces you to make the concept but very very simple and you yourself understand the concept in a beautiful way but simply find a person and explain things to them in the most simplest of ways this is one of the things that richard feynman said in his feynman technique and i still remember some of the complicated things just because i explained them to someone while i was reading them the next point is kind of difficult sort of controversial but it's something called as ratta mar in the indian scenario it just translates to rote learning there are a few subjects which you will encounter which really require this method over here i'll share a story with you pharmacology is a subject which is very difficult we have a lot of drugs to remember a lot of effect side effects indications and contraindications what i used to do is i used to take a sheet of paper write down the name of the drug 10 times so that i would be able to remember it next time what i also did was i used to write down the classification of these drugs many many times and only and only by writing it so many times was i able to remember all the drugs and all the properties associated with that drug it is really not easy if you're just starting out in second year but gradually gradually you will get the hang of it and you will be able to remember things a lot more and rote learning is very very important especially if you are even dealing with genetics and medicine when there are so many different genes which you have to remember the chromosomes the location of that and the disease associated with it and the only way that you're going to be doing it is by ratta mar i also remember every subject is not all rote learning there's sometimes a lot of concepts involved as well so make sure that you are thorough with the concepts along with the rote learning part one of the quotes i really like to study the phenomena of disease without books is sailing in uncharted sea but to study without patients is to not go to sea at all by sir william osler and this is one of the quotes written in the first pages of bailey book for surgery and it is very very important whatever you are reading in your books you go ahead and see that it does not just apply to us as mbbs students but to all the other students as well In the world of medicine it is absolutely important to do that. You can read all about hernias and how to treat them, how to manage them, how to diagnose them, but you will never ever understand a hernia without seeing it. The next point is something which I've already talked about a lot in this channel, but it's called as the mistake book. It's the book that contains all your mistakes from the question banks and it is one of the best ways to learn new things. Because the idea is simple, you solve a question bank, you make the mistakes and you write down all of your mistakes into a mistake book with the MCQ ID, the Perl ID, whatever you got. Or read this mistake book and revise it. You will be learning from your mistakes. which is the most important learning of all times i used this mistake book a lot while i was preparing for neat and i've already made a dedicated video for this entire thing and you can check that video right over here the penultimate point is have a mindset which is positive have a mindset which is optimistic and only and only then will you be able to learn new things if you are already going ahead and approaching the subject like yaar mujhe kuch nahi aata main acha nahi hu mostly mere se subject nahi hoga 
यू वोट एवर बी एबल टू डू इट हैव दैट पॉजिटिव ऑप्टमिस्टिक एटीट्यूड कि आई विल बी एबल टू डू इट दिस इज ईजी आई हैव डन अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बिगर दैन दिस एंड बेस्ट एक्जाम्पल आई कैन गिव यू इज लास्ट मंथ आई कम्पलीटेड मेडिसिन फ्रॉम मैरो विच वज अराउंड टू हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी लेक्चर्स फ्रॉम मेडिसिन फाइव एंड नेवर इन द वर्ल्ड डिड आई एवर थिंक दट आई वुड बी एबल टू कम्पलीट इट बैक वन आई वॉज इन थर्ड ईयर एंड दैट्स द मेन रीजन आई डिड नॉट बिकॉज माई मेंटालिटी वॉज वेरी स्टैगनेट आई वॉज रियली नॉट गिविंग माई फुल पोटेंशियल आउट दर so only and only when i believed that i can actually do it was the time when i saw that i could do so much more my lecture watching speed jumped from 5 lectures a day all the way to 17 to 20 lectures a day and it all stayed with me the only thing is that this mindset changed and this mindset change really really pushed me to all my limits and it's something which is so powerful you should definitely be positive and be optimistic while approaching a subject you will see miracles happening all around you once you do that not just approaching a subject but also approaching life you will see once you believe in yourself once you believe in what your goals are and once you believe that you will be able to achieve them you actually truly go ahead and achieve them it has happened to me so many times you should definitely try it out lastly the most important point is that if you have a mentor who is guiding you all throughout your journey it will be very very easy i consider myself extremely lucky that i got so many great mentors in gmc nagpur be- be it my seniors professors or junior residents all of them play a significant role in my journey and if you can finding a mentor for you is one of the best things that you can do because a mentor will guide you through what they have been through and personally tell you what you should do or you should not do and lastly if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing because making this videos take up a ton of time effort and energy to make and subscribing in just 2 seconds would make up for all of that use the first link in the description to download wondershare uni converter an awesome software that will really really help you out yeah that's about it it's your anuj i'll catch you in the next one Until then goodbye